Alright, hello and welcome back to Hammer Editor Tutorial with me, John Z. Hodgson. Um, this is Hammer Editor Tutorial number 9, and we're talking about... Now, uh, we're, we're, we are going to get into the good stuff. Um, this, this subject matter is on... Um, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, like making a little bit more complex brushes, not just the blocks that you see here. Um, I want to talk about displacements, which make things look realistic like uh, ground and uh, cliffs and um, uh, really useful uh, for doing outdoor areas uh, and uh, painting displacements. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. Um, but uh, right now our world is you know flat and matrix like and uh, very uh, you know very um, boring. So we're gonna put some ground in there and uh, we're gonna make it look realistic and, and, and interesting. So anyway uh, and then um, I'll be, I'll be refer referring a little bit to uh, um, subjects that I talked about on uh, tutorial number eight which was about um, optimization and viz leaves and stuff like that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then uh, um, go back and check it. But it's not going to be too heavy, so don't worry about it too much if you if you don't get it. Because uh, mostly this stuff is the practical stuff. Sorry about tutorial eight, by the way, because um, it is kind of dull. But uh, I needed to include it for the sake of completeness. All right, so let's get started. Uh, to start, bring up your uh, Texture window, type in no draw, and then go get your no draw texture. If you remember what this does, it means when you make a uh, texture like this, then it um, the computer does not actually draw the faces on there. There's there's no texture there. It does recognize that there's a block there, but there's no actual texture. Okay, so let's make a patch of ground. Let's say about, um, well, no, we're not doing that yet. Um, just some some more things that you can do with a block like this um, is some vertex editing, which I haven't talked about yet. Go down here. It's at the very bottom of this toolbar on the side, and uh, it's got these little red dots around the, uh, around the cube. That's your vertex edit tool. Hit that. And it'll turn your um, block kind of translucent y, and um, it'll have these points that you can click and grab onto. You can grab onto them in the 3D view, or you can grab onto them, I, I much prefer, in the 2D view so that you can uh, better um, manipulate the whole thing. So I can grab on this point and pull that towards me, and I can pull on this point, I can pull this up, I can do all kinds of stuff with it. Um, and then this is, it looks like you're kind of cutting the solid, and, uh, but in fact it's a little bit different. You're not actually um, making new faces, you're just warping the faces of your block that are already there. So when you're done manipulating, um, I'm going to make it, I'm gonna, eventually this will be kind of like a cliff thing that I'm going to show you how to do. So I'm going to make this kind of like a, um, you know, what is that, trapezoidal? rhombus like shape and uh, click uh, click enter or okay and here it is now this is really um, using the vertex edit tool is actually um, way better than using the clipping tool in my opinion it um, it makes this and I don't fully understand it um, I do apologize but um, when you're working with displacements, it's a lot easier to make displacements out of, uh, out of blocks that you've uh, vertex um, manipulated instead of just cutting them using this cutting tool over here, which you should know al already how to use. More things that you can do with blocks that I failed to mention earlier and I'm mentioning right now is you don't actually have to make a block. You can pull down this menu here and you can make things like arch cylinder sphere, torus wedge, that kind of thing. If I wanted to make a sphere, for example, then I could outline it on my map. It would be a block. And then when I hit enter, 
then we'll come up with the sphere. You can change the um, the number of uh, faces that the sphere has, or the number of um, the sides, like this this slice, this slice, this slice, this slice. How many slices that it has um, before you create it using this tool. So if I wanted to make a, a more complex sphere, um, I'll build another one right here. Move that up there, and I can make the double that to 16, and then hit enter, and this sphere is much more defined. You have to be careful when you're using when you're building um, brushes like this that are anything other than blocks with um, with angular faces, because um, well, they, technically they all have angular faces, but um, you have to be really careful when doing anything but these. Um, anything other than blocks. If you don't set them to uh, tie to entity func detail, and this is something I talked about in tutorial number eight, if you don't set them to detail, then they are going to create one hellish nightmare mess for your computer to compile um, uh, the viz leaves that these, um, that these uh, uh, brushes create. Uh, they're going to be Blue, if you uh, saw tutorial 8, there's going to be blue lines shooting out everywhere, and, and, and it's going to be really difficult. And you'll, you'll be, and, and the more of these you have in your game, then the more you'll be framing out, and the longer it's going to take to compile. So very bad. Make sure to do things like arches, um, cylinders, and spheres, as uh, and uh, columns as um, details. Set them tied to entity, and then func detail. You will thank me later. Anyway, um, yeah.